Boss! Boss! Come on! <laughs> The CHR, the Coupe High Rider, was an all new model in 2018. Last year, they made some exterior styling updates, which I think the vehicle looks sharp. And this year, they debuted the Nightshade Edition on this vehicle. You may remember the Sequoia that I had that had the Nightshade Edition. Toyota is adding Nightshade to about 10 to 12 vehicles with more in the coming years. Toyota is doing everything they can to make this subcompact SUV as attractive as possible. <laughs> Get out of the way. Toyota is doing everything they can to make this subcompact SUV as attractive as possible to you because in all reality, the cons outweigh the pros. I'll explain. Four big negatives. The engine, pretty weak. Cargo, pretty small. Rear visibility, not great. And no all-wheel drive, just front wheel drive. On the plus side, a long list of standard features regardless of trim level, and it's a pretty comfortable ride. Boss man. What's up, Bossy? Woo! Hey, Bossy's here, and I was just gonna tell you that uh, I have a friend in the back, in the cargo area, that I'll introduce you to, in addition to Boss. What's up, Bossy? What's up, Bossy? So here is that powertrain, two liter, four cylinder, made it to a CVT, 144 horsepower, 139 pound feet of torque, front wheel drive only. Again, that's one of the big downsides that it can't compete with other vehicles in this class that have all wheel drive. Fuel economy, 27 city. 31 highway for mixed driving number of 29. The CHR comes in three trim levels, LE, XLE, and Limited. We have the Limited. So here's what makes it a nightshade addition. Black fabric interior with gunmetal trim, same as the LE by the way, black 18 inch alloy wheels, black lug nuts, black door handles, black chin spoiler, and black badges throughout. Before I show you the backseat legroom and headroom, I'm gonna show you the cargo space because that's where I'm keeping my friend. There is 19 cubic feet of cargo volume behind the back row, which is actually up right now. And here is my buddy, Henry. Maybe you've seen this guy before in my Everyman Outdoors YouTube channel, Buck Henry. He's my 3D target for my, my bow. Um, I'll be shooting him a little bit later. Boss! What is that, boss? What is that? What is that? What is that? <laughs> Watch out, boss. So again, just over 19 cubic feet of volume behind the back row when both seats are up. I have one down just because that's how I have it right now. And when they're both down, it's just over 36 cubic feet of volume of cargo space. Unfortunately, the 19 cubic feet is not enough room to put this guy. I can't put my bow, but not this guy. Now on both sides of this uh, subcompact, the door handles for the back doors are up here. One there and matching over here on that side. So that's how you have to open it, which can be a challenge if you have some little ones who are used to opening a door right here. So if you got some short kids who want to get back there, they're not going to be able to open the door on them themselves. We'll have to have an adult do it. So officially, here is my headroom and leg room for a guy who is 5'11". As you can see, it's pretty tight for myself. This is my position as a driver up front, and it's right there at the edge where my knees, barely enough room between my knees and the back of the seat. Here's another view of my legs, my knees behind the back seat. I definitely don't want to be back here for any long rides. How about you? Huh, boss? boss doesn't know. I hope you can see this based on the shadows. I can't tell by the monitor, but here's my headroom. Again, 5'11", if I was 6'2", is not going to be a comfortable place for me. So there you go. And as you can see, maybe he's got some small windows, which isn't helpful when it comes to visibility in the back. Oh, hey, there's some arrows. So here we go inside. Coupe High Rider, they call it. C-H-R. Boom, 144 horsepower, fired up. All right, Apple CarPlay is hooked up. So there's your eight inch screen. It's not bad, it's centered. I can see it real clearly. It's more driver centric than it is uh, passenger centric, meaning it's a little bit angled toward me. At least it looks that way optically. So I like the way this looks. It's not protruding past the, um, the line of the windshield, even though maybe based on this angle, it looks like it is, it does not obscure my sight lines this way. Now here's something interesting. This does have some drive modes in it, but the drive modes are only accessible through the 
uh, multi-informational display up there. And you do it by going through the controls on the steering wheel. So if I want to press in now, then I can see Sport, Normal, and Eco. Those are the three driving modes you have. And when you go into Sport, it's a seven-speed sequential transmission. They do have the manual option here. So I go down to drive, slide over, and then I can play that little game where I'm going back and forth, but I'm not going to right now. Oh, let's put it in reverse right while we're here. And you can see Buck Henry just chilling in the back. What's up? I'll shoot you later. So that's how you uh, organize the drive mode. Sometimes they'll have it right in here. You can just do it manually, but not in this case, it's up here. My average fuel economy is not great, but that's just me and my driving habits this week. Temperature's cold outside. I haven't gone really fast. I haven't done a lot of highway driving because of the weather conditions. So I've only averaged 26.6, whereas they are projecting based on normal driving habits, 29. Now I mentioned it's a comfortable ride, which it is. I feel like the cabin up front is the best place to be. Back here, even though they say it's for five passengers, getting five full-size adults in the back, not ideal. You can probably squeeze in uh, a small car seat, probably front-facing car seat versus the rear-facing car seats because of how far these seats go back for someone even my size, and I'm just an average size adult. So best place up here in the front. And driving around town, as I got some footage here, it's a, it's a comfortable ride, it's, it's smooth, uh, not a lot of power when you're driving around, but it's got plenty of safety features with the blind spot information in the side mirrors, lane departure warnings, but rear visibility is not great. Back here in front, you can see as you look behind me, a lot of dead spots or black spots. So even if I looked over to my right, there's a huge gap right there between the passenger window and the small window for the, the lift gate or the hatch. And a little bit over here to the right, but I wouldn't really look that way necessarily for driving because I got my blind spot information there. But rear visibility, kind of a dark place in the back. But otherwise, it's good to drive and that's where it comes uh, for you to do your own homework and test drive these vehicles for yourself. I can just tell you off the top that um, if you want to get around decent fuel economy, not the greatest, uh, but with a small engine like this and fuel economy is supposed to be in the mid to upper 20s, uh, you'll get the job done and I'll talk about the price here in just a bit. For 2021, the CHR now comes standard with Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, a comprehensive suite of active safety systems that include pre-collision system with pedestrian detection. There's also emergency steering assist, road sign assist, full speed radar, dynamic radar, cruise control, lane keeping technology, which is that lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist and sway warning system and automatic high beams. Blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert is standard on the XLE and above. Oh yes, one more thing. There's only one USB port and that's the one I have plugged into uh, access or I guess to activate the Apple CarPlay. So just one right there. Of course you have the Bluetooth options, which when you go into the, um, the car itself, you can go through the setup, the phone, uh, and there's the Apple CarPlay if I just wanna show that directly. Uh, but only one USB and there's no wireless charging pad, Maybe it's a price thing. Speaking of price, there is no sunroof or moonroof, which is gonna keep the weight down, but also will keep the cost down. So a lot of give and take, no all wheel drive, um, no charging pad, 2021. You might wanna have a wireless charging pad or at least additional USB ports. There are not, so yeah. Your MSRP range on a 2021 CHR is between 21 and change and $26,000. Of course, you opt for that Nightshade Edition is going to cost you a little bit extra. I think it looks sharp, but considering the competition in the subcompact SUV category, this has a lot of work to do. And I hope they do it because I like Toyota as a brand and I like this one, how it drives, but it needs some help in terms of its engine as well as all wheel drive as an option. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson alongside Buck Henry and Boss off in the distance. We'll see you next time. Adios. <laughs>
One more thing before you go, I've added links in the description below to some of the best-selling automotive accessories and products on Amazon right now, plus links to some of the product reviews I've done. You can find it in the description below this video. And if you don't mind, take a couple of seconds and click that subscribe button. I'm uploading two, three, sometimes four new videos every week, and I don't want you to miss anything, plus it helps support my channel. As always, if you have any constructive criticism, thoughts, or suggestions about my video, please leave it in the comments section below.